Imps, the Youngstown Dogman Guy. I know we're going to have some new people tonight uh, from the in-between, so welcome to anybody that's new. We have a good show tonight, guys. I know that you have seen what it is about, so I'm not going to really waste any more time with small talk. I'm just going to bring our guest on. So welcome, Carol Ann. Thank you very much for being on the live stream. Thank you for having me. I uh, love live streams. This is going to be fun. I know you do. You had told me that uh, when I had you jump in that one time. And I'm super excited about having you. You know, anybody from my channel that maybe don't know about, I mean, they have to know. But no. if you don't know about Carol Ann's channel, I am going to real quick run this here. You head on over to YouTube at the In Between Tales. And you check out their channel. Her husband, Anthony, helps uh, do everything. You know, he, he does. What exactly? So I know you do a lot of, of the editing, but what are the job differences? What do each of you take care of? I do the videos. I write them, shoot them, edit them, and then I turn them over to him. And he does the rest, basically. He, he puts the shine on and- it. Yep. No. Okay. Video's no. done when he gets it. He posts it and then manages the channel on top of that. He does all the okay. social media stuff. He does everything on the back end. Well, he does an incredible job. You mm-hmm. obviously do an incredible job. Uh, you know, I told you, and I'm going to embarrass you a little bit. Uh-oh. Before we met, um, I told you, you know, that I. Sorry, I had to set something up there that I watched your channel all the time before we met. So when we met the group of us, I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, it's Carol Ann. I, I told her how much I love her channel. So, guys, I'm being really honest with you. Head on over there to the to the in between tales on YouTube. Hit that that uh, like button, smash that uh, notification bell. Make sure you give those thumbs up for everything. Watch everything she's doing. Um, She does an incredible job. It's one of my favorite channels. And it's funny because our one friend between us that we met from was Josh Nanocchio from uh, What Lurks Beneath. And it's just funny, the groups that the people that I've met through him um, and, you know, we just all kind of got things going and, and met each other. So I'm really grateful about that. And, you know, we become good friends and I'm glad you're here tonight for the live stream. Thanks. I Is am there... so glad that we've, that we've got to meet each other too. And if it makes you feel any better when we, that same meeting that we met the first time I was like the same, I, I felt the same way. I'm like, Oh my God, it's Matt M. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, you know, just because of your history, I was just like, oh my gosh. Thank you. You're I like a star before you were a star. I appreciate that. Oh my God. No, I, I don't see it as that, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody, uh, Anthony is in the chat. He is the Mr. Mr. In Between. Is it the mm-hmm. Mr. In Between? Hold on. No, I think it's just Mr. In Between. And by the way, before yes. we get too far away from talking about the channels, I just wanted to say the one thing that Mr. In Between does for the videos is he does all of the AI images that we have in our videos. He and does an amazing you, job. Well, if you have not seen our last video, which was on the not deer, which is, you know, what we're going to talk about tonight. He hit it out of the park on this week's images. They are phenomenal. Just saying. Everybody, if you didn't catch that, you know, push there, check it out. You know, we have a subject that your newest video is about the not deer We have uh, the Wendigo and Skinwalkers. Can you 
explain what the not deer is? Because a lot of people probably don't know. No. Um, and I had heard of them before I started researching for this video, but I didn't realize how many stories there are about this thing. So the not deer is, you know, you're walking through the forest or whatever, and this cute little deer comes walking by and you're like, oh, look, it's a deer. And then it, it either looks funny or it moves funny or it gets up on its hind legs and starts charging at you. I mean, it does something to let you know it is not a deer. <laughs> I, but I've not seen deer. video. I've seen some videos of them and they're extremely disturbing. Some of them. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing one that a gentleman, uh, his friend kept recording as he was being attacked by one and he was on the ground while this thing is, is hitting him. So I was like, wait a minute. I just like it clicked. Like the first time I saw it, wait a minute, this guy is getting beat up by this deer and somebody's recording it. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, I spoke to you also when we talked about, the subject of this show, there is a correlation or at least a connection that intertwines these, these cryptids. Um, you know, what's your opinion on that statement? Well, you know, yeah, there's a lot of people who say, and I'm sorry, I have a, there we go. Um, there's a lot of people who say it sounds like a skinwalker or it sounds like a Wendigo. And obviously those are, well, the skinwalker especially is known to be a shapeshifter. Here's what I find interesting. The majority, not all, but the majority of the not deer sightings seems to be around the Appalachians. Although there is a website of a guy up in Alberta, Canada, who's cataloging a whole bunch of experiences up in Alberta. But there's, there's some in Oklahoma. I mean, there's some around. But the majority seems to be Appalachia. But skinwalkers are supposed to be Navajo country. Right. So is it something different? Is it something that's spreading? And I don't, and I, I have to say, I don't know enough about the Wendigo expect, except the, the basics of the lore to know where most people see the Wendigo. Uh -huh. I mean, I want to say that that's North. That's like a Canada. I know that we have reports here in Minnesota. Um, I want to say that's a northern phenomenon, but I don't know that for sure. Okay. So wow. is it something that's spreading and just is under two different names, but it's actually the same thing? I don't know. Let's see. Masochist Mouse. How many people did she scare before she had her channel? with her amazing storytelling skills. You know, the <laughs> answer, and by the way, thank you, Masochistic Mouse, for coming on over. Um, the answer to that question is zero. Zero. I am not a, I've never been a storyteller. I was not a storyteller until I recorded my very first video. That's impressive. And again, I'm okay. not, I, I'm not blowing with smoke, but I mean, look at, you know, you guys are over 25,000 right now. Oh, yeah. We're close to 27. So Wendigos have been also a part of my life because I'm a huge comic geek, comic books. Right. And in the X-Men, uh, I was introduced to what Wendigos are. Um, in the so X-Men? The X-Men comic book, yes. Wow. There, there is the Wendigo, Incredible Hulk 181, and it's the cover to it. And it's the first appearance of Wolverine. So anyway, the Wendigo in Marvel Comics is a giant big monster that used to be human, and he ate flesh of the human of a human being and turned into the wendigo and had the curse yeah the skinwalker has to do something terrible to a family member but then aren't they kind of done so to speak they're just an evil entity the wendigo from what i understand 
and I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not an expert on either of these two, but I think the Wendigo, you had to eat human flesh, not as some diabolical thing like the skinwalker, but let's just say, because like I said, there are stories in Northern Minnesota where it gets a little cold that, all right, it's a tough winter and your buddy in the cabin dies and you eat his flesh to survive. That would turn you into a Wendigo and the Wendigo has a forever hunger after yes. that. that. I was I don't, just going to add that. Thank yeah, you. That I don't think that the skinwalker has. Yeah, I, you're right. I don't think uh, I've ever heard of it being, you know, that serious that they just can't, you know, quench their hunger, so to yeah. speak. Yeah, the skinwalker what, seems like just a, to me, a diabolical creature. And the Wendigo seems to me as more of a sad, you know, something that I I want to be more sympathetic to. They're cursed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it's crazy to think. Do you, I mean, do you believe that, you know, if you went through the, the steps that you would really, you know, if you became in something else that you would, you know, turn into what they're talking about? I don't know. That's such a hard question. Do I believe? Yeah. That's so hard. Um, I think on most cryptids, I'm, I'm really literally on the fence. Because there's the rational side that's like, whatever <laughs> you know right. there's just a whole lot of people looking for a whole lot of attention yes. but then there's the other side where you have so many eyewitness accounts of so many different cryptids of people who are credible you know it's like I how agree. do you not believe them but i want to yeah. jump more into uh, the not deer again for people that are not familiar what's the easiest way again because people have jumped in what would be the easiest way to describe what a not deer is it looks like a deer but it doesn't act like a deer that's the, that's the simplest baseline because that could mean because there's there's all kinds of different reports from it had it had more than two eyes or its eyes were forward facing as like a predator, as opposed to being more on the side, like a real deer. And what oh. I think is really interesting as far as tying it to skinwalkers is that there's also lots of those reports talk about it being half man, half deer. And, and people describing it like a skinwalker in training where it's in the middle of morphing. Right. But it stopped in the middle there somewhere. So it's half man and half beast. And I, th I find that really interesting because a lot of the accounts are of a deer. Like um, it'll, it'll act more like a, a zombie deer, if you will, and just be really bizarre, get up on its hind legs and chase you or whatever. Right. But then, but then there's all these reports of it being half human with a deer head. Yeah. So, okay. What do we, are those two different entities? Are the zombie deer, the not deer, a thing in their own category? And are the deer headed men, are those more skinwalkers? That's what I find really fascinating is that are are we talking about the same thing? Are they all different things that just kind of share some characteristics? And I yeah. had a thought earlier, I had a thought a couple of days ago based on a, a conversation I was having with somebody in my comments about are they the same? Is it possible that skinwalk because we're talking about the fact that the skinwalkers are usually in the navajo reservation area right and the not deer sightings are happening in mostly in the appalachian area are they the same thing or not right. and the I, the thought that occurred to me is is it possible that because his 
the the commenter's theory was that skinwalkers are spreading. And my thought back was, are they spreading or are all of these different cryptids all around the world, is it possible to take a look at them and see how many of them share the same characteristics? Is it possible that skinwalkers are actually everywhere and have just been called different things from different traditions in different countries in different times? How do you tell the yeah. difference between skinwalker, wendigo, or cr oh, crawler? We're getting into the crawler. They are oh. all similar. So let's tackle the crawler. I want to know your opinion on that one, Caroline. <sighs> Oh, that is a tough one because it just seems like, again, it seems like something that could be a skinwalker that just look. I mean, you know, if the skinwalker can change its appearance, maybe it's just a skinwalker. But then again, I haven't really heard of pale crawlers. Well, I take that back. I guess I have heard stories of pale crawlers going after people, but maybe not in the same way that you know, skinwalkers will chase your car and try to get you. I haven't quite right. heard the same about pale crawlers. They seem to be a little bit more aloof, just as creepy as I'll get out. But they also seem to still have that. And this is like, seems to be like the one thing that all cryptids have in common is the, the crazy ability to install an over the top level of fear into you when you see them like the level yeah. of fear is greater than what you should have for what you're seeing if you're just seeing a deer standing out in the field why is that so scary you know or if you're um let's say you're out hunting for bigfoot and you're 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 out there hoping to see one so if you see one that would be a good thing but when you do see one the the fear goes off the chart well why would that be if that's what you're out there for you know i agree so all cryptids seem to have that ability to instill that fear and i've heard the same thing about crawlers same thing the level of fear goes off the chart i mean obviously some of it is warranted but but evidently not as much as they instill Jumping to Antonio Vasquez, Matt and Carol, have you heard of the flying dog man in Brazil? I've heard of a flying dog man before. I, I didn't get the actual, you know, it's it's normal place to hang is is there. Um, have you heard of that before? No. And it's funny, too, because we had a video. We had somebody send us some footage Oh, it's been at least six months ago, I think, of what they said was a dogman. Okay, so just to set this up, we get an email from this American uh, guy who watches our channel, right? And he got the footage from his cousin or something who lives in Brazil. So the footage is all in Portuguese, you know, whatnot. And it was like, very shaky footage, but his cousin sent it to him saying, Hey, well, he actually said it was a werewolf. And then that guy sent it to us. And so we, we did a video around it on the history of werewolves in Brazil. So I'm a little surprised that there's flying dogmen in Brazil. And I haven't heard of that because I actually have yeah. done research on Brazil. How did I not hear that? <laughs> dog man that can fly i mean obviously that's the assumption if you're calling it a flying dog man but how does that work like how does it fly or is it yeah. like a flying squirrel that's not really flying <laughs> okay so the latest here. creature says i think there is an entity form of dog man that appears in sacred places burial mounds battlefields old dwelling yes. places of early people they are like guardians that i've never heard I have heard that. One of the stories that I had heard about dogmen, um, why they guard certain, you know, areas like cemeteries or Indian burial mounds and things like that is because they are looking for, uh, what did they tell me? There's a certain type of, of uh, 
symbol or a, a, a piece of something, I forget what it's called, um, that they go and they're trying to find it to turn themselves back into whatever they were, that if there's, some of them are cursed, that... Um, and did you ever see the video of the one supposedly digging a grave, digging in a grave in Akron, Ohio? Did you ever see that video? So what? it's a creature digging in a grave. Yeah, it's on YouTube. So it was it happened in Akron, Ohio. This girl and her friend were driving through at lunchtime uh, a cemetery in Akron, and they come upon. For real, this wasn't like set up. A, you couldn't really tell if it was a person or not. Just all black, really big, digging like dirt, flying in the air, digging into a grave. And they drove by, came back when, and it was gone. And they found like the grave had been completely almost dug up or it had been dug up. Or there was a huge hole where this thing was digging in. That sounds really interesting. Everybody, I want to thank you again for coming tonight. Um, what's coming up with you, Caroline? Just working. Just pumping out as many awesome videos as we can. One new one every week, preferably on Sundays. Sometimes if they take me a little longer, we put them out on Mondays. Well, they are phenomenal. Uh, thank you for being on. And thanks to all my in-between people who came over as well. I appreciate that. We will see you guys all later. And we appreciate everything that you have, uh, that you guys have done. Thank you. Love you all. Thanks. Good night. Bye.